Good morning, everyone. Hope you're all doing well. Um, welcome to episode four of Where is Anna in Her House? Um, I'm making it kind of a game now to find a new place to film every time I do one of these videos. So this is now a new spot that you probably haven't seen before. Um, I, uh, I hope everyone is doing well. We're praying for all of you and it's been so nice to connect with some of you and um, those of you who I haven't been able to connect with, uh, I hope you're doing well. Um, I wanted to talk today about um, the book of Philippians. Um, I've um, A couple of us uh, youth leaders have been doing um, a daily Bible study with our junior high girls and this past week we went through the book of Philippians and um, I actually have what's called the Illuminated Bible. So this is what the book of Philippians looks like. Um, Illuminated Bible, not a sponsor of this video. Um, so it's um, in the ESV translation, but what it is is um, each book of the Bible is a separate little book uh, and it has um, the Bible on one side and then a place to take notes on the other. And so I really enjoy it because you can dig deeper into it and really take lots of uh, notes. You don't have to worry about like writing really tiny in your margin. Um, so we went through the book of Philippians uh, this past week and um, just a portion of chapter one really uh, stood out to me and I think it really applies to what's going on uh, right now. So I'm going to read starting at um, verse 12 of Philippians chapter one. I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel, so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to all the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ. And the most of the brothers, having become confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. So. Um, a little bit of context here. Paul is writing this letter um, to the Philippians from prison. And so I know we're not in prison, but I'm sure for some of you it feels like that almost, like we're just so restricted and not able to get out. And so Paul, to a degree, um, would have known how we are feeling right now. And I just thought that it was so interesting that he pretty much here is saying it's worth it. Like him being in prison has furthered the gospel it has furthered uh, furthered God's kingdom and the guards now who are guarding him know about Christ because he's been living um, out his faith and he's saying that all of this is worth it and so it just really challenged me that I don't know of any specific stories but I'm positive that God is using this crisis to bring people closer to him um, because he will use whatever he can to bring people to him and to further his kingdom and so I asked myself Anna are you willing to put up with this level of um, uh, not being comfortable and not doing what you want and being stuck at your house am I willing to put up with that for another month, another two months, six months, I don't know, if it furthers God's kingdom. Because sometimes it's hard, we're sitting in our houses trying to find things to do and being impatient and bored and we're not thinking about all the moving pieces that um, have been put into play that God is using to really reveal himself and touch people's hearts. And so it's hard when we're not seeing those results right in front of us, but I know that God is using this. And so Paul has just really challenged me here. Am I willing to put up with this and not even put up with it am i willing to be joyful in this circumstance if it means that people are coming to christ and that this is an opportunity that we have to further his kingdom and also i was reading today about um in luke um the shepherd leaving the 99 to go after the one and the fact that he rejoices when just one person repents and comes to him so if all of this was for one person to become a Christian and one person to gain eternal life, was it worth it for us? And sometimes as humans, I think we're all about the numbers. It's like, okay, how many views did this video get? Or how many people showed up at church today? Or how many people came out to this event that I organized? When God is not about the numbers, he cares about that one single person who has repented and come to him. And it says that the angels rejoice in heaven when one person comes to him. And so do we have that same mindset that 
all of this is worth it if it's for one soul that will spend eternity in heaven with him and so that was really just my challenge this week and it is something that I have to remind myself of every single day because every day I wake up and I'm like oh, I just want to hang out with my friends I just want to go back to regular life I want to be able to see you all on a Sunday but God uses uncomfortable situations um, in order to further his kingdom and sometimes he has to use these things to wake um, us up and so I just really hope that um, that was an encouragement to you and a challenge to you um, and that you can be thinking about that in those moments in those days where you're just sick and tired of this because I know for me it happens daily um, but just remember that God is using this to further his kingdom and it's worth it if just one person comes to know him through this um, so thanks for listening um, I will be talking to you all soon I hope